Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate the support of the channel and checking out the videos. Today's video is moi in my 4190mm millimeter. M4190 millimeter. It's not the GF. I have the GF. I bought this recently. I've always liked the Black Dog. Why do I have to? I don't know. Because I collect the silly things. And then when the game goes to funk, I have no collection. That's, you know... <laughs> that's how we roll man it is how we roll but I really like this tank and with the old hunter battle challenge thing it doesn't have a hundred battles so I've been playing it a bit I do like scouts you can see I've got it set up with a CBS I've got optics and a uh, muffler or whatever it is I'm using a directive for camo and I am not running food that's the one thing one try hard thing I'm not running here I should probably do that actually give a little boostage to the rest of the stuff bottom tier and only a two tier battle and we we're on Himmel's Pilsendorf Spawn into the north. What we're going to talk about today is never giving up slash clawing it back. Clawing it back. Let's just get going with this. Scouts obviously on this map like to go over to the east side over here and work on the 9-0 line. Especially with a CVS. We can kind of try to burn through the bushes and whatnot. Unfortunately, I'm working against an ELC even 90, so I'm not really interested in diving down the bush line. Which is something I would in the recent past pretty much always do no matter what the scout is it just it doesn't work out and especially if you don't have backup so we're gonna be a little more careful today we're gonna to come here to the corner and let's see what's coming to help us and it looks like potentially a several guys going up to the sniper hill and the sniper hill is not super useful for this fight sometimes You've got uh, KPZ going through into the middle. And then we've got the lightweight. All right. He's going to go forward. All right. I will accept you going forward <laughs> because we just don't have any guns back here right now. It looks like the ISU and maybe another, what, Su-130 PM is showing up. But I'm going to be a little bit more careful right here. Just take a little exploratory shot. I don't know why he drove up into the open just to shoot the 50 TP, but he's going to lose nearly every hit point, if not all of them here. Going forward and attempting to outspot the ELC. If the player's not very good or he doesn't have a great crew or it's not set up right, you might be able to beat him. You have to assume, though, that the EVA 90 is going to outspot you. All right, thought about running away. There he is. He gets lit. I'm thinking, oh man, can we kill this dude? Please kill that EVA 90. That would be absolutely amazing. And he tucks into behind those and behind those pipes right there. Everybody's trying to get a shot. Oof. Okay, then. <laughs> so artillery comes through in the clutch move and kills the even 90. That goes a long ways towards evening this thing up. But I am still not interested in pushing down that line. I know that they've already kind of invested in there. You can see there's a blue dot. Something has moved up. I don't remember what it was. Unfortunately, the letters, as I always say, are pushed off to the right and not the left when it gets close to the right border, which is extremely annoying. Why that still exists, I don't know. So we're going to start moving around and try to do something a little bit different. I can see the KPZ's coming in. Now, I don't want to come up and get highlighted just trying to shoot him because I'll get shot by 42 snipers back there. Perhaps 41. Uh, maybe maybe 39, something like that. I'm going to swing around this way and see if we can't catch this KPZ. I've got this Barosk and myself looking at this dude. There he is. Is he going to come up? Barosk is backing out. Gets a shot on him. Gets another shot on him. He's up. I don't know why he did that. I don't know why he would swallow a fly, but he did. He went after the Bros, thinking, hey, Bros gets fired twice. I can take him out. That is me, guys, most of the time, right? That is me, especially this early in the game, taking risks like that on a flank. I, I am a famous one for going to a flank, doing pretty well, but dying there. And I've been working hard in my gameplay for a couple of years now, probably, so maybe I haven't been working hard enough. To try to not be as aggressive as I used to be. It just simply is not working out as much as it used to. Now the enemy team feels like, and we're going to take a look at this right now, because this is the clawing it back part, right? We're down 2-5. to five. This flank it looks like it's in huge trouble. They've got a pretty good force over there in the factories. And right now I have switched gears to let's just try to get as much damage as we can. I will try to play as smart as I can, get as much damage as I can. If I can somehow claw it back on this side, then we'll keep going. We'll see how it goes for us. 
but I am not uh, dying over there on the zero line, which, you know, in a lot of games I probably already would have. It's hard breaking old habits, my friends. It is hard, especially when those old habits used to work pretty good. All right, DeBras takes a hit. Boom, I get hit by the Artie. That Barras is right there. Snap works. Holy cow, that's nice. Nice low roll there on a 240 Alpha gun down to 211. We got three dudes, but they're all hurting. There's one. All right. Oop, there's two. Hey, look, wait a minute. Okay. We're okay over here now. Meanwhile, though, if you look at the mini map, I know we've got trouble over in the factories because the enemy team is pretty much bunched up together. Where did I get Artied again? This guy's just splashing people. He knows there might still some, be somebody there. I'm going to wait till we get... There we go, and we kill that guy, and we'll get moving here in just a moment. All right, see the guys pushing through, and that's what I was worried about. we got the collapse going on back there in the factories. They've got the other... What is surrounded down there? I can't see. It's one of our tanks there. The 50... Yeah, 50 TP PR guy. He gets killed. We've got, what, a Barask in the back. We've got a Barask up here. Now, he gets pushed by a G-Sword. All right, opportunistic, right? Clawing it back. It's one thing to fall back and farm damage, but at some point, you gotta, you got to get in there and take your, your opportunities. And used to be I'd do this very early in games, but now it's more of a mid to late game attempt anyway to do these kinds of things mid to late game. All right, he's taking a lot of shots. I figure he's on a reload. I know the G-Sor takes forever to reload. He's going to be at least two, maybe three shots to me, depending on how the rolls go. So we're going to auto-aim, hit him for 253. High roll, very good. 277 is looking like definitely three. There we go, 242. So two high rolls don't aren't enough to get rid of him, so we know we're going to need one more. He's just trying to survive to get to his reload, and we're able to shut that guy down, right? So we jump on an autoloader when he's on a reload. That's pretty standard stuff right there, bog standard kind of stuff. But you got to be paying attention for those opportunities. Our right, RG-SOAR is hanging out back by the cap. We have a Brosk, who's back where I was by that building, myself and the G-SOAR right now. And we are taking on three heavies and two artillery. A little stab into that guy. Another low roll at 215. Oh, big hit. There you go. The Barras takes this guy down. Very nice. And we lose our G-Soar. So he probably... I think he put another shell into it. I wasn't paying attention to the damage. Ever. Take a stab at the low. Not really a great idea. That's a heat round. <coughs> I knew there was something in between there, so it's it's going to eat that heat. So I wasted a gold round on a shot like that. But I was kind of thinking at that point, this is a bit of a desperate situation. I did not want to knock down that tree. Try to not knock down trees late game, especially if you're trying to disappear and appear somewhere else. If somebody happens to be watching, there are two arty, so they'll be in top-down view a lot more than other tanks will be kind of looking around. They tend to see things like that a lot more. All right, one's on cap. That's great to know. Andy's lit. So the Barask has the KV-4. I'm coming all the way around from behind. I was hoping to maybe find an artillery. But because they're pushing cap and the Barask is attempting to take on two heavies... I blow off the idea that I'm going to go after the artillery and decide to try to get in here and maybe do some right at the edge of spotting range kind of shots on these guys. Not going to be able to wait till it completely zooms in, but it works out. So we get him down to a one shot. I'm not that worried about it. Let's talk about time here just a little bit. We talk about this quite a bit, but time in this game is important. We have plenty of time overall. We have seven minutes left over there. We have seven minutes left, so eight actually. So we're good. It's, it's not a rush. You know, we need to start picking these guys apart. The Brosk did a nice job down there. Now I need to get in here and start supporting this guy. All right. But we have a minute and 12 until we're capped out. So there is a bit of a time limit being imposed by the enemy team, putting a little bit of cap pressure. I don't think I would have done that in this case if I was a KV-4, but he is trying to draw us out. With the artillery, that's the X factor, but I know I'm going to be able to come around behind this Lurva, and I'm hoping he doesn't see me. That concerned me. He was looking at me. I knew if I shot, he would see me. And there was no rush, right? There's the time thing. Yeah, I could have shot at the front of the Lurva. And then probably the artillery might have had a stab at me. And they'd have known which direction I was coming in from. So there was no reason to do that. Let's go look for a better angle on this dude. And then we find the artillery wandering around, which is very nice. And then this guy, I have a better angle from here. He doesn't see me. We kill him. Perfect. 
The 155.55 was trying to go forward and add some more cap pressure. And now it's starting to get a little bit of a problem. 42 seconds. And we find the KV4 out there. I think I actually bounced one before I kill him. Yep, I hit something else. Didn't get lit, which is nice. So he's just sitting there staring at where the Barask was. And we shut that guy down. Very nice. And, of course, uh, we've been called retardo, retardado, retardados by uh, the uh, fantastic, excellent, whatever he was. Well, I can't bring the chat back up in a replay unless somebody else types something. It's a little bit annoying. I think something silly happens here. Let's, I think, I have HE lit. I don't remember. I think something really stupid happens here. Nope, never mind. I thumped him. That was a different game. Actually got better than I would have. Hey, HE actually worked for Guido. That's fantastic. 341. So we end up with 2,479, 1,032 assists. And huge shout out to the Barask, who I believe ended up doing considerably more than me. Yes, 3,439 for him with five kills and five kills for me. So between the two of us, 10 of the 15 enemy tanks and just claw that game back, right? Go to those critical spots take your tank to a good spot for that kind of tank be very careful not to overextend based on the way i assessed this game was probably going to go i was pretty sure it was not going to be a good idea to go blitzing down the nine zero line i love doing that because i love out spotting but just looking at the enemy setup i really didn't feel like that was going to happen between the ru251 and especially the elc even 90 so I did it a little bit more carefully. Plus, I really didn't have a whole lot of support until a little while later. So if I had just turned that corner and headed down south, I'm probably out of the game and going back to garage and doing something else. Team had a bit of a rough go of it. They got, got on a big advantage to us. We were able to shut down between the Barask and some of the guys hanging back the push. They, they made an ill-advised push towards the cap once they won the flank. Standard, right? How many times have we talked about that? Nearly every time. Nearly every time especially in losses. We saw the purple team do that to us today, and they paid for it. They got shut down. And then, because there was still an overmatch over on the west side, they cleaned up those guys, and we had to go start working light tank, medium tank, view range, speed kind of ops right there, and we were able to take them on as they pushed into the cap, you know, trying to cap it out. And they paid for that as well. All right, man. Well, there you go, clawing it back. I, this is like an old friend. I, this is probably one of my favorite tanks in the game. I haven't played it as much lately, although it's been a bit of a renaissance in the last month or so since I bought this thing. I've been playing it a bit. I really do enjoy it. Um, I don't think it's, you know, it's not the the best spotting tank ever. The ELC is probably better at that. Maybe the LHMTV, stuff like that. But as far as a pretty solid scout with some good medium capability later on in the game, I really like the Black Dog. All right, there you go. Let me know what you think down below. What could I have done better? What could I have done worse? I don't know. <laughs> That's all I've got. We will see you.